Okay. P Professor Zhang, please. Okay. Thank you. And uh, good afternoon, everyone. It's my pleasure to introduce this topic. The second generation TKI as the first line therapy for newly diagnosed CML. Current frontal TKI therapies include imatinib, dacetinib, and nilotinib. We know imatinib has resulted in excellent outcome, but it is not perfect. Nilotinib and dacetinib have shown a more rapid response and fewer prog uh, progressions compared with imatinib. With the approval of the second generation TKIs for the front, of the front line therapy, clinicians and patients are faced with difficult choices. The more potent, the better, which is the best TKI for a particular patient. To answer these questions should be based on the optimization of the following factors the efficacy and the safety of the TKIs and the patient's characteristics and the experience of the physicians. First, the important is the efficacy and the prognostic score of the patients. We know the disease progression of the uh, uh, second generation TKI is much lower than imatinib during the, uh, the, the RT, RCT trials. And, uh, but the similar uh, OS and the PFS survival, we can, we can see the similar survival rates. So the similar uh, story from the decision trials. But we can see the deep molecular response of MR 4.5 by the five year according to the SOCO score in the Nilotinib groups is much higher than the imatinib. So oh, this summary has uh, been presented by Dr. Jabu. We can see the rate of uh, early molecular response failure are lower with nilotinib compared with uh, imatinib. And the patients, uh, the, the rates of the BCR able less than 10% at three months were improved with nilotinib regardless of SOCO score. And in patients with intermediate or high SOCO score, PFS and OS are higher in both nilotinib arms than in the imatinib arms. So we can give the patients a risk-adapted therapy. The patients with high risk should require more powerful second-generation TKIs. The second, the safety and the comorbidities. Now, there are some concerns about the side effect of the second generation TKIs, such as the cardiovascular events. Uh, it's very common in the nilotinib arms uh, in the NST ND trials. Most of the patients with a cardiovascular events had at least one risk factor and were not optimal managed. Another recent report published in the ASH meeting showed cumulative incidence of arteroclusive occlusive events was 30% by, five, by, by four years. And 70% of patients were in the high or very high groups. Another common side effect is hyperglycemia in the inest ND trial. The patients, 30% uh, of the patients without prediabetes had occurred hyperglycemia. And in decision trials, plural effusion is common. And Pulmonary hypertension was reported in 10 patients, but no cases of confirmed pulmonary arterial hypertension or fatal complication was reported, were reported. So we should focus off-target complications during the second generation TKI's treatment. After more than 10 years of imatinib treatments, we cannot see very we, we can see very mild or rare, rare severe complications. 
although uh, nilotinib and dacetinib were well tolerated in the RCTs, it should be noted that the population in the RCTs are much younger than the Euro CML patients, and they do not have significant comorbidities and the concurrent medications. Therefore, the results of the RCTs cannot be directly applied to the out study patient. When selecting the second generation TKIs as a first line therapy, risk factors for the AEs should be kept in mind. Treatment goals and age. We know the treatment goals of CML includes normal lifespan and the normal quality of life. Treatment-free remission is additional goal just for the, new, for, for the younger patients. For all the patients, we should seek the goal of normal lifespan and the normal quality, normal quality of life. Both imatinib and second generation TKI can be the, uh, recommended as the fourth choice for all these patients have the, this uh, uh, treatment goal. But uh, for the patients only focus on normal quality of life, imatinib will be preferred. And for the younger patients should seek who should seek treatment-free remission, second generation TKI is preferred. All this evidence. Oh, so the proposal of the individualizing clinical decision based on the comorbidities, treatment goals, and the disease risk profile has published in this ARCH meeting, uh, Dr. Hughes had presented. The last is the cost. This is a survey reason, uh, this is a recent sport uh, uh, from American doctors. The co conclusion is patients with higher co-payments are more likely to discontinue or be non-adherence to TKI. So the cost, of, the cost of the drugs is very important to be concerned. Last year, Dr. Kentachi and a group of CM experts had uh, appealed to the lower of the TKIs of the TKIs price. So, can we find a cost-effective treatment strategy? Imatinib will be become generic in the recent years, so it may become increasing relevance to determine how patient might be optimally management man, managed. Combine the cheaper imatinib with the more patent but more expensive second generation TKIs. Could we start a generic imatinib and switch to the second generation TKI only if the patient does not hit aggressive treatment milestones rather than start and stay with a more expensive TKI? Could we start a second generation TKI and switch to a generic imatinib? maintenance if the patient enjoys a deep molecular response. So it's a very interesting challenge. Conclusions, upfront second generation TKI for newly diagnosed CMLCP patient may be preferred in patients with high risk, less comorbidities, in younger patients in whom the prospect of eventually achieving treatment-free remission is likely to be of great importance. So today is a great day. Thank you. Thank you for your attention. <laughs>